Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me for another Chan style Tai Chi class. Let's take right hand in fist, please. Left hand straight, pulling back the thumb, feet together, hands together, and press forwards. So um, let's relax down. Now, um, I record my live classes and I often share them on YouTube. Not always, uh, I just cherry pick. Let's go into the four corners, please. So if you're seeing this on YouTube, um, please like and share and subscribe to my channel. That will help me grow my channel. Um, so if you do that now, <laughs> that would be great. Um, let's feed into the four corners, please. It's nice to get as many people out there doing Tai Chi as possible. We're just doing a very short warm up today. If you watch my videos, you'll know I put an emphasis on warm up. We never skip warm up. Let's change direction, please, because it really does help you reduce the risk of injury. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good. Um, and it just makes everything more comfortable. It gets the energy flowing. It gets the blood flowing. It helps your body function. So even if you do nothing else in your day, I would encourage you to do uh, your warm up. Obviously, you'll do something else. But if you do no other Tai Chi, do a little Tai Chi warm up and it'll just help you move easier. It'll help you flow through your day easier. Less pain, less restriction. Good. So let's now come into one leg and we're going to gently circle one foot. Now, often I combine this with linking the hands and rolling the wrists. You can do that. Uh, last night when I suggested it, one of my students rolled her eyes and um, says, oh, I don't like this one. I said, why? She says, oh, I can't coordinate. I can't do it. And there she was doing it very well. She was doing the legs perfectly, but it was an issue of putting the two together. Let's change direction, please. If that's you and you're finding it difficult to circle the leg and circling one wrist at a time, then just do them one and then the other. <laughs> you don't have to do it all together. Good. Shaking out. But if you can, if you can make an attempt at it on the other side, please, then it's going to help you coordinate. It's going to build your coordination. So let's see if you can do it. Link the fingers and circle the wrists. Tai Chi is not about doing everything perfectly. It's about working towards an unobtainable goal. <laughs> That's how I see it. Good, let's change direction. Tai Chi actually translates as supreme ultimate. Yeah, so it's actually aiming high. You're aiming for the highest possible outcome with the understanding that you'll never actually get there. That's the, that's the thing. And I think that's what us Westerners don't understand necessarily shaking out because we're used to being go-getters that, oh, there's a goal, I'm going to do that, I'm going to get that, and you strive towards it, and you get it, and there you go, you've got it. No one doing Tai Chi would actually say, I know Tai Chi. If they do actually understand Tai Chi, you can't know Tai Chi. You can only work towards it. And that's what this is all about. It's walking a path. Let's circle the knees a little bit, please, and keep going while I grab a tissue. Live recordings, aren't they great? Excuse me. Yeah. So keep circling those knees nice and gentle, nice and soft. No bigger than the size of your foot. Should be the size of your circle. And very gentle, very slow and soft. Change direction. Very good. So we're walking a path, so to speak. We are learning how to use our body to make incremental improvements. 
and we keep striving. But just like walking a very long path in front, you'll see the vanishing point, but as you move towards it, the vanishing point moves away from you. So it guides you on like a carrot hanging in front of a donkey. Let's go one at a time. So as you improve, new opportunities open up in front of you. Good, and change direction. Keep breathing. Good, let's come back to center, bring the feet together. Now, we're going to do a squat today, but we're going to bring our feet together to do it. Now, this is a slightly more challenging version. If you're concerned about balance, if you feel you can't squat easily, you can always go into the shoulder width version. And if you're doing that, you keep your knees in line with your toes and sit your bottom back. We're going to try, try a little bit more difficult with our feet together. We're going to grasp our hands. I'll show you it from the side as you sit back and down the arms extend forwards so notice my knees have not gone past my toes and then lift up now you only ever go down as far as you can comfortably and up and also you have to be able to get up as well so try maybe go a little bit and come up Good, and that's all we're doing, just three today, and these out of your stance, shaking out. So try, go a little bit down and up, and then see, can you go a little bit further and up, and then a little bit further and up. Again, the goal is not to get as far as I did, um, though that could be your goal, but to go further than you have before, or to just do it in the first place. Good, let's do a little twist of the waist. So we're doing this kind of rowing action, bending the knees as we row and twisting. And you can look over your shoulder. We'll do two turns to each side. And breathe. Very good. Now, if you would actually like to take part in these classes live with me, please do consider contact me and uh, I'll give you the details and you can come and join in. It's very nice, one at a time, please. It's very nice to have a live interaction class. You can ask questions in real time. And we have a little community together that gives support. Good. Back to center. It's also really good coming to class, even on Zoom. <laughs> It's really good because it gives you that discipline to come to class each week and not miss a class and uh, get into a routine of training rather than just clicking on a video when, when you feel like it. Change direction, please. So there's great benefits of regular attendance to a class. Good. Good, and let's just circle those shoulders. Recently, one of my students who has come to my live classes, face-to-face -face classes uh, for many years, she came to one of another class that uh, she wasn't normally at. And uh, we were doing a different syllabus in that class. And I said, have you done this? And she says, oh yes, <laughs> change direction, please. And it didn't occur to me she'd be coming online to one of my classes and had learned the syllabus. <laughs> but I'd never seen her doing it in front of me. So it seemed bizarre that she knew what she was doing. And then it clicked. Oh, OK, so you've already learned this with me online. Good. Let's go one at a time. I was really thrilled, actually, to see how well she was doing it as well. So, uh, yeah, you can. You can very successfully learn by training online. Before COVID, I didn't do any 
online teaching. I thought, oh no, I don't see how that would work. But when needs must, I went online and I haven't looked back. I actually think it's very useful. It's a little different from being in the same room together, but still you can get a lot out of it. Good, okay, back to center, deep breath and lift. And let go, and again, lift. And one more time, lift and relax. And we're just going to float up through the top of the head, relaxing the body down. And let's very gently roll head from one side to the other. Breathe into the stretch. Listen to your body. Good. And let's bring everything back to center and gently lift. Lovely, relax down. Now the plan today is to go twice through the form. We're looking at the Laoja Ilu, which takes a bit of time. So we're just going to do a little bit more on the legs um, and then we'll get started into the form. Let's square the hips, please. And we're just going to roll your boat forwards and back and breathe. Every time you bend your knees in Tai Chi, I want you to think of it as rather a release from your center, from your belly, your Dan Dian, releasing the belly, releasing the hips, releasing the knees. So it's rather like you are melting rather than bending. And you will feel a different quality when you do this and it will help protect your knees from injury. Good, and let's just swap over. If we had an hour and a half or the luxury of a three hour class, we would be doing a 20 minute stand. Sounds on practice. And actually last night, one of my students said, I love standing practice. Wow, it was music to my ears because a lot of people suffer their way through it. Their mindset isn't quite right. So we did some standing practice last night. It was great. <laughs> but uh, it is something that we build, build a taste for because you'll realize actually it's very useful. It's very um, strengthening, nourishing, and it's brilliant for your alignment, brilliant for your general structure and uh, helps, helps with everything. We're not going to do it today. <laughs> I'm sorry, not in this class. Um, but I would like you to please have a wee play with your standing. Hello. Um, excuse me a sec. Oh, I'm allergic to everything. <laughs> it seems. Okay, so how do you feel? Do you feel warm? Do you feel ready to rock? check in with your body give yourself a wee second and if there are any stretches that you feel you want to do do them now i'm doing what my body wants it's good to learn this kind of independence and awareness of body rather than only ever just doing what the teacher tells you um, take your moments you know if they're teaching something unless that thing is hurting you go along with the teacher but then in the moments like these this is your opportunity to do a bit of freestyle do whatever it is that you need to do take advantage a lot of people when i say okay do any wee stretch you want to do they'll just stand and wait they just don't know what to do go off piece have a little have a little explore of your body and see see what it's doing today see how you want to move it that is a skill in itself and it comes again with practicing just seeing seeing what's what as you move your body okay <laughs> that was your little grace time <laughs> 
If you want a wee sip of water, take it now. And then we'll get into form. So let's see if we can get twice through the form. Um, today, uh, I have a few little corrections that I'm working on for my teachers. One of them, I'm not sure if I covered this, was step back repulse, sorry, step back twist up her arm. In Yang, we call it repulse monkey. In Chen, we don't. <laughs> Um, but I was told to relax the foot down and think of sitting, releasing into the hip, rather than just taking the weight back, which can become quite tight. Um, I know I'm facing the other direction, but just for clarity here. Um, so we're stepping back, foot down, and sort of think of sinking in or sitting in to the, the back, sitting into the hip as we feed back. And as we turn, we're lengthening the front arm forwards. The hand is coming in, the front arm is still forwards. Um, I had been kind of contracting everything. But wait until you go to step, and that's when the arm starts to come in. So that's another wee correction. So we're sitting into the back hip a little bit more. And lengthen. And when you go to step, that's when the arm starts to travel back. So that's one we thought for the day. Uh, another one that I'm working on is the Jin Gang exits the temple at the beginning of the form. I'm not going to mirror, but I'll just do it for you. Is to elongate the back arm as we extend forwards and to really make this bar across. It's a correction I've had before, but I keep tending to want to expand a little bit but really think of just feeding into this, uh, what would that be? Like horizontal flat bar. So I'm even encouraging my shoulder down a little bit. So we're expanding the back leg along the line, make the bar, and instead of relaxing to center there, we simply turn, coming through center and up. So a little bit different there. Okay, I'm not sure if I've covered that in this class before, um, but it's something I'm working on, so you can have a have a play with me. So we step, we circle back. As we expand forwards, the back arm also lengthens. We make it more bar-like rather than expanding too far forwards and turn, come through center and up. Yeah, so it's more of a, finger strike than a palm strike like that see how you get on with that okay yes let's get started excuse me sorry okay over to the right hand side of your space as you can see i'm in a sitting room here it's not a haul, it's not very long, so I'll be adjusting to fit everything in. You can do the same. Ready, we lengthen up. Chin slightly down and back, relaxing, calming down. Take a moment in Wuji. Lengthening the fingers gently down. Let's begin. Release. Here's your Jing Gang, exits the temple. Expand the back arm, make the bar, turn through center, and
worry if you can't quite get a correction straight away. Nobody can. <laughs> Just do your best, bear it in mind. And if you miss it, think, okay, next time I'll try again. Sitting into the back, into the hip. One more step. Next word. And
to the back corner. Prepare and punch. Four corners ward off, if you have room. <laughs> High pack on horse to face the back. Can you pause there for me, please? Relaxing to center. Check your hips are level. Shoulders are relaxed. This is a good opportunity to check posture. It's an excuse for me to blow my nose. Okay, good. Continue, please. So we gather and circle down. Step the left side, hand and foot come across. Sit down, arms up, palms flat, thumbs out of the way. Kick, step, and repeat. Arms up, foot behind, turn to the back. Gather in fists, lift left, turn palms, pull back toes, kick to the side. Three steps. Punching the earth. Good. Feed it back. Untwist. Right foot quarter turn up and over and relax down. Monkey holds peach. Release and false kick. Real kick. Step down and back. Feed the weight back. Left palm facing out. Step for protect the heart punch. We bend the right leg. Make fists. Wrap around the ball and square up for fist under elbow. Release. Ward off. Left palm faces in second time. And Turn, kick, to face the back. Stepping left, gather. This time, keep the hands open, lift right foot, turn toes, kick right. Toy soldier position, quarter turn. Three-way punch, stamp. End of part two. There's a punch, relax to center, fill your fist, punch. Good, part three, very different energy, roll and fill. And Switch the tools in, 
relax to center and There's no step in here, I'm just repositioning. Make sure you have plenty of space on your right. Three steps, cross and turn on the third, gather in. Single whip, and your second set of cloud hands. Turn, feet forwards, golden cockerel stands on one leg. Softly down, and I'd like you to hold this position for me, please. That's the end of part three. Again, checking posture. <laughs> Relaxing to center and heart full. Ready, we step back, relaxing into the hip, extending the front arm until you step. And Prepare to punch to the back corner. <laughs> I 
Four Corners, Wardall. Again, I need more space, so I'll take it. And here is our third set of clawed hands. This is the same as the first set. We could have left one out to give us space, but we're going to do the form as is. So we gather and step. Turning towards the back for our second high pat on horse. Okay. And here we have the end game. We do our little circle. Gather to the left, pull the right shoulder back. And this time we punch diagonally downwards. Gather, uppercut, I'm going to come back a little bit because I'm quite far away from you. So this is a wrap in fists, relax to center. Each time we turn, we relax the hip a little bit more. And that allows you to go down further. Now we're going to kick around just so that you can see the ending should actually just kick to the back. Wow, I'm still doing it the old way. Yeah, it'll take time. Ready? Good. Float or release your spine rather. Feed into right, close left. Good stuff. Recover and a heel tap. <sighs> Once through. Good stuff. Now we've just under 15 minutes to do it again. I think that's a it's doable, but it'll be a bit of a rush. So I'm going to try again. <laughs> it's difficult for me, but we're going to go from part three and we'll do part three and four again. But I'm going to give you a wee moment. You can have a rest, have a drink, feel into your body, do any little stretches, and then we'll do it again in a moment. Good. Did you have a nice little break? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Any questions, folks? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So as I say, any corrections that you get, um, it can take quite a while to integrate them. That's okay. Um, what you can do is make a little note, um, have a little Tai Chi diary. That's what I do. Anytime I go training, I try to write down everything of value. Um, every every uh, thing that the teacher says or any of my um, colleagues, because quite often you learn a lot from from your peers as well. They'll say, oh, here, do you see when you're doing this? 
it's actually better if you do that or don't forget to do this so i write it all down as best i can and i may never look at the um at the notes ever again but the action of writing them down also helps me to process and remember that information quite often unfortunately uh, i have to have a correction repeated you know several years later because i'll assimilate it and then gradually you know it's like chinese whispers my body will find its way back to the way i was doing it before or find some other deviation um, so this is quite common that we tend to, um, like Grandmaster says, it's like a pendulum. There at the top is supreme ultimate Tai Chi, what we're aiming for, but we tend to swing through the direct line to perfection. We go, we overdo it, uh, we overcorrect, and so we're going past it, and then we try to correct that, and we go past it. So we're continuously going back and forth as we uh, progress um, but each time as we refine we deviate less so that's that's the nature of the beast unfortunately we can't just fix it and there it's perfect all the way we tend to as we evolve as we train um, new deviations creep in and um, but they can be subtler so we are still improving but it's just not a straight line of doing it perfectly all the time <laughs> that's not possible but we can um, we can make great improvements, but be prepared to not do it perfectly. It's just not possible to do something perfectly straight away when it comes to this internal work where we're not just moving our arms and legs around, we're getting our alignment, we're connecting, we're moving our energy. It's not easy, <laughs> but it is very much worth it. So let's have a little look at part three and four so part three begins with the punch um, and i call this whole sort of area the wafty wafty bit <laughs> it's much more gentle than part two it's much softer uh, so we have done our punch relax to center and punch okay so rolling center feeding back and step And we're stepping through and Now we need room for three steps. This could be a jump, right, jump, left, step. I'm doing it slowly so that you can see. And step, lands eye.
cloud hands. This is your second cloud hands. And it finishes a bit different. One, two, three. On the fourth step, you go over the little hill, feed into the left and kick, step and step and feeding it forwards, golden cock roll. And this is the end of part three. And let's just use part four as our warm down, relax to center. This is a repeat of part two, relaxing into the hip, extending the front arm. One more step. And it's all exactly the same as part two. Until until the turn. So this is all the same. Lightning flash through back. Here's your turn. So we step. Now we roll the left hand in. Feed the weight back and flick. Stamp. So it's more direct this time. Now we're back to plain old repeat to part two. Prepare and punch. Four corners. And fill your back. Good. Single whip. And here, oh, relax to center. We have our third set of cloud hands. which is the same as the very first set of cloud hands. So if you need more room, take it. Turning to the back. And this is where it changes when you get high pat on horse. Now we're in the end of the form. We circle. Gather to the left, push the heel back, weight back, turn, turn, and release. Okay. Three way punch, stamp, prepare. And this is your diagonal punch down, the elbow going diagonally back and up. Good. Circle. Up and the parent close up. Good. Now I know I'm miles away, so I'll come back a wee bit. Ready, relax. Each time you turn, relax. Feed it across, turn, relax. Feed it across, turn, relax. Feed it back and forwards. Fill your front foot. Step four, down. And expand. 
release the chest and right hand up, left hand down and back, kick and let's bring it to the front just for zoom purposes, feed into the front, kick, step back and back. Jingang exits the temple. Good. Up, down. Think of sealing in your good energy. Point to the floor. Float up. Release the spine. Fill the right foot and close. Good, recover. Heel tap. Excellent. Well, we wanted to do twice through. We managed one and a half. I think that's still pretty good. <laughs> very, very well done. Um, I'm looking forward to going through my corrections with you. That's things that my teacher said, okay, so let's tweak this. Let's work on that. Um, and it's very helpful. There's some things, as I say, it's even just a change in the way we think about the move or the words that we use to describe uh, what we're doing that can actually make all the difference. Remember where your mind goes, your energy follows. Where your energy goes, your body follows. So if we change the way we think about what we're doing, that will change the way the energy flows and it will change the physical outcome as well. Very, very subtle. This is why we call it internal work. Every thought directs energy. Energy directs the physical. Isn't it fabulous? <laughs> Thank you so much, folks, for joining me today um, and for working so hard. Every day is day one. Remember that we're all students, no matter how high we go. Um, so if you're struggling, we are all struggling. But let go of the struggle and just enjoy the process um, and you will feel every day you get a lot out of your Tai Chi. Thank you so much for joining me today, folks. Let's take right hand in fist, left hand straight and we press forwards. Have a brilliant day, practice <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Thank you.